I'm going to be speaking to you about cubic models. So let's first of all talk about what a cubic is as opposed to a quadratic. Remember, quadratics have powers of 2. So a cubic, then, is a power of 3. So watch, I'll show you this. So f of x equals, I'll do a generic one, like um, a to the x, sorry, not a to the x, ax to the power of 3 plus bx squared, didn't make my b very nice there, plus bx squared plus cx plus d. This could be like a generic or general form of any cubic. So the key thing is there's a power of 3. Do you notice that? Like that's, that's the key thing here. Okay? Cubic means power of 3. Power of 3. Because of that then, we can state that a can't be 0. Because if a was 0, it wouldn't be to the power of 3. We also know that uh, you know a and b and c and d, they're just real numbers. So it could be anything, any coefficients here, okay? It's just a matter of finding them. Now, what kind of shapes can cubics have? Well, it all depends on the different situations. There's lots of different ways, but um, a cubic can be like this, something like that. So keep in mind then how many times that it crosses. Now, it doesn't have to be just like this, though. It could also be something like, keep in mind, it doesn't always have a max and a min. It can also be something like, um, it can also be something that just goes like this. I mean, cubics can be like this as well, just like y equals x cubed, in fact, does this. So just keep in mind, it all depends on, you know, the different conditions and stipulations here on the coefficients, but it could turn around that many times. In fact, that's what I want to talk about, the number of times it sort of turns. So notice it turns around once, then it turns around twice. Well, do you notice then, um, it turns around twice, and look at the exponent is 3. Well, watch this. What if we do x squared, for example? It actually turns around only once, doesn't it? Like an x squared can only turn around a maximum of one time. Now this is the maximum, because here it doesn't have any you know, places where it actually has a max or a min, not a local max or min at least. That's why I said the maximum number of times it can sort of turn. It would be exponent minus one. Do you notice on this one right here, see it only turns once, and you know, it has a, has a maximum here. Well, just like if we do a x to the power of 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0, so it turns no times. That also sort of explains why um, a graph, like a linear graph like this right here, you know, there's no max or min. That's what I sort of mean by turning, okay? When it turns, it has a local max or min. So here, for example, here's a turn, here's a turn. Here was one turn, here was no turns. All right, so what can we do with cubics? By the way, this is why I put this, because when you're doing cubics, in order to solve for x, let's just say you'd have to take the cube root. That's why this right here is the, get it? It's the cube root. Look, it's a cube with roots. It's a cube root. <laughs> uh, remember coefficients? No, me neither. Nostalgia, bro. Ha. So let's look at a real situation here. Um, so we're trying to try to model this with a cubic. So a box has a square base with length and width equal to x. So notice there's a little box here, x and x. It has a height of h. So the total length of the edges is 24, which is kind of weird. And we have the volume of the box written like this. We're supposed to find the value of k. What? Well, I think it helps to just write down like what is, what is the volume. Maybe let's start with that. What's the volume of something? Isn't it the length times the width times the height? Hopefully you agree with me, that's what it is. It's length times width times height. So in this case then, the volume will be, well, x times x times h. Do you notice that? So it's x times x times h, which means the volume is x squared h. So far so good? That's my volume in this case, it's x times x times h. Here's the problem. I have this in two variables. I've got x's and h's. That's no good. Remember I said oftentimes when you're doing modeling, you want to get things in terms of only one variable. So what do you do? Well, we need more information. But we have more information. Look, let's use this piece right here. The total length of the edges is 24. What does that mean? Well, that means if we do the edges, what does that mean? Well, that means 24 equals, let's see, how many edges are there? Well, there's an x, an x, and an x, and an x, and an x, 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 x. Do you notice that? So it's like 8x. And how many h's do I have? I have 1, 2, 3, 4 h's. 
Now, if that wasn't very clear, let me show you this. This is x and x and x and x, x and x and x and x. And let me do maybe the h's in a different color just to show you. All right, so this right here would be for h. Why is that? Because there's an h here, 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 and here. So there's four h's and eight x's. All right, why is this helpful? Do you notice then? I'm supposed to have an equation that only has x's, no h's. So do you see what I could do? I could replace for h here. So I could get h by itself. So I could say, all right then, oh, wait a second. I can divide everything because this is 4, 8, and 24. They all divide by 4, don't they? So watch, I'll divide everything by 4. Just to make my numbers work a little bit nicer. So 24 divided by 4 is 6. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 4 divided by 4 is just 1. So hey, that's a lot nicer. Therefore, I can say that h, if I want to get h by itself, I get it 6 minus 2x. Do you see I moved my plus 2x over? Why is this helpful? Because now I can sub in here. So you see, this is actually the hard part. The hard part of the question is really part a here. I don't think that's so simple. So if we do this, then all right, well, then we put in this. So let's go. Let's go ahead and do it. So I have v equals x squared, and instead of putting h, I put in 6 minus 2x. Let's expand that. So I have v equals, let's see, x squared times 6 is 6x squared. x squared times minus 2x is minus 2x cubed. So do you notice then what I've got here? I've got this equation right here. Let me just put in a nice little square like this. I got this equation. This is actually my equation for the volume. And they wanted me to say, hey, what's k? Do you notice they said, look, it goes 6x squared minus kx cubed. Then it looks like k is, must be 2. Does that make sense? So k then, keep in mind, I know it's a minus there, but uh, I can say therefore k equals 2. Well, that's because we already had the minus going on there. Right? It should have technically said, you know, plus kx cubed, and you could say k was negative 2. But the way they've written it with the minus and the minus, then I could state then that k equals 2. But really what was important is we figured out the model. This is the model that's going to define this whole thing. So let's find the value of x that maximizes the volume. What does that mean? Well, that means if I did a graph of v, let's actually do that in terms of x. Okay, so I'll do it x and I'll do v. Well, let's do that on my trusty old calculator here. So I'm going to get a new graph. I'm going to do that equation. So 6x squared uh, minus 2x cubed. Boom. So what do I have here? A graph that goes like this. So I'm going to attempt to just sketch this real quick like, okay? So just so you know, I'm going to try to do it. So it goes something like like this. Now, are there any limitations to this? There really are, because every time you do a model, you have to think about limitations. Does that make sense that v has to be greater than zero and x has to be greater than zero? Because you can't have negative volumes and negative things. So we're only going to look at the positive part here. Okay, so that's going to be the first important thing. We're only going to consider this part right here. And we're going to ignore the rest of it, even though mathematically speaking, it does all this. Mm, okay, well, then I have to have that my volume must be greater than zero. My x value can't be equal to zero either. Okay, so that defines it a little bit. If I want to maximize the volume, well, that means there's a maximum, isn't there? Let's go ahead and find that. That's easy to do on our calculator, isn't it? I just go to Menu. Analyze and say, give me the max. It's going to ask me for a guess. So I'm going to say lower bound, so I go a little bit below it. Upper bound, I go a little bit above it. Notice it's 2, 8. So I'm going to say, ah, great. That means it's x is 2 and the volume is 8. So now, which is the volume I really needed? Which is the value, sorry, that I really needed to know? I needed to know that x equals 2. That's the value that maximizes the volume. You notice? So there you go, I'm done. Now, if I wanted to check my answer, just to make sure I've done this right, I could then bring this back into, well, not really check it, but let's just see the shape of this thing. So just for fun, let's just let's just go ahead and, and take a look at the shape of this thing here. So shape, or like what are the dimensions? If I made x equals to 2, that means this box is like this, right? Like this, and like this, and like this. I'm just trying to draw it like this right here. This here is 2, and this is 2. Okay, well, what was h? Do you remember though that h, so I'll say but, h was equal to 6 minus 2x. And if x is 2, then I go 6 minus 2 times 2. Because see that we just found that x was 2. 
So because x was 2, I put it in there. But what does that give me? That gives me h equals 6 minus 4, so h equals 2. Hold on. That means that this value then, watch this. This is actually really cool. This value of h equals 2 then, that tells me this is also 2. So in other words, it's a uh, cube. A cube is the one that maximizes the volume. Isn't that kind of cool? Because I could have made these like 1 and 1, then I would have had a bigger number here, right? But isn't that kind of fun? So a cube, it turns out, so 2, 2, and 2 will actually maximize the volume.